Hi, Taurus, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your December 2020 money and career reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new readings, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into this safe and loving space. And now let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Taurus. <clears throat> Excuse me. December 2020 money and career Taurus. 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 Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Okay, <laughs> that was funny. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. And let's see what your chakra energy is for this time. Taurus. December 2020 money and career, Taurus. December 2020 money and career, Taurus. December 2020 money and career, Taurus. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly angels and spirit guides. These four. So we have here determination, the solar plexus chakra. Grounding, the earth star chakra. Communication, the third chakra and universal light, the soul star chakra. And we'll see how that all equates to the tarot. So we have here, the left-hand side is the inner self. The middle is the heart, the emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. We have the knight of pentacles, which is you shining through as a knight, as a defender. You are represented by the pentacles in the minor arcana. You are represented by the Hierophant in the Major Arcana. You have the Chariot right here, 
which is Cancer Energy, time frame June 21st to July 22nd. Strength, Leo Energy, time frame July 23rd to August 22nd, and Cancer does go straight into the Leo time frame. And then here you have the Page of Pentacles. So you start off as a defender, you're crowned by being a defender, and you're rooted by being a student. It's very interesting. It's very beautiful. You go far in your inner self during this time. You have the Seven of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles. The Nine of Cups. The Ten of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles. Like you hear as a queen, there's power as you move forward. The tower, yeah, great change after heartbreak and being a pauper. And you become a student of your passion. Oh, it's like it's, like it's a new day. It, it really is. It's like it's a new day. It's a new dawn. You get to embrace what you love. And let me just look at this for just a moment because it's just calling me here. Yeah. You get to embrace what you love. You get to move forward. And your prosperity gets to crown you during this time. There's something about the goats here too. And I'm just going to let spirit kind of talk me through that as we, we talk about the rest of these cards. And of course we see the, the chakras. And we're going to see what people, who is going to aid you during this time. Who is going to aid Taurus, December 2020 money and career. Who's going to aid Taurus, December 2020, money and career? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. So we have here Justice, Libra Energy. Time frame, September 23rd to October 22nd. But this is a person who is very discerning. It doesn't mean that they follow the letter of the law. They're very discerning about the energy that they let into their lives. And that's going to be something that really motivates you during this time. Because this is such a time of, of transformation. This is such a time of empowerment, of stepping into your own, of seeing what it is that you desire, of moving forward cautiously but determinedly. And here it's like you can't take in everything. You can't be everything to everyone. And that's what this person really lets you see. And we'll talk about it in an equation to the chakra in a moment. The Queen of Pentacles. Now, Earth sign energy is, of course, drawn to Earth sign energy. And yourself here comes through as a queen. So here you are looking at what it is that you desire, what it is that you want. You're seeing, you're being lured in by this person. And that sounds, that sounds bad, like lured in. But there's, you're very attracted to this person for the connections that they make, for the way that they help you bring the pieces of the puzzle together. And that's something that you're really into, Taurus. You're really into the pieces of the puzzle coming together and the deeper insight, the deeper understanding. And their vibrational energy really resonates with your vibrational energy. And you're like, oh, that's the piece I was missing. Oh, that's what I wasn't seeing before. And then it leads you to the Lord, which is Aries energy, time frame March 21st to April 19th. Very alluring to you also if you're, you're born on the, on the cusp with Aries. This is power. This is determination. This is claiming your throne. And the thing is, is that you'll look at this person and you'll see, you'll see them as really ruling their life well. But if you get to know them deeper, you get to know more about them, you know, either through like media, you're sitting there and you kind of like Google, you research them or just by listening to them talk, you're going to realize they're not perfect. Nobody on this earth is perfect, but they rule their life well. And that's really what matters. And that's what you're very drawn to during this time is somebody who rules their life well. And we have here, you know, the, the solar plexus chakra, the earth star chakra, communication, the throat chakra, and and the universal light of the soul star chakra. So here with determination, it has been an uphill battle for you for so long. And it has affected your stomach. You might sit there and have a very upset stomach at times. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, where it's like things that you eat just... 
they hit you hard or you know you have to be very mindful about what you're drinking and here with with the determination with the way that you move forward listen to your gut listen to your gut in the realm of what you eat what it what your body wants to be nourished by and what your body wants you to stay away from and also be very very aware of things that you crave during this time because you might be craving things that are actually really bad for your body but your body is like kind of addicted to it in one way or another so here just be very very mindful of that I'm, I'm just seeing that as being very important and there is a sense that emotionally there's a part of you here Taurus that is like oh is it another battle like oh my gosh like you you're crowned by the tower there is a change that has come into your life and that has been moving you forward and you're like oh my gosh it's another it's another battle it's another hardship it's another pain it's another disappointment I can't the fact of the matter is you're not meant to swim in the same stream as everybody else it doesn't mean like you're segregating yourself though <laughs> you are very much following almost a hermit path during this time a sense of this is my truth this is my power this is what I love and this is what I desire it's it's a following your, your truth that is leading you forward. And at times it does feel like you're going against the current of the world. Is that wrong? No, it's not. Grounding. What makes you you? What is your rooted self? There are points about us that we say, this is me. This is who I am. This is how I am. Like it? Fine. Don't like it? I'm not changing. And so here with the rooted self, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing your roots going deep. You're seeing your passion. You're seeing your power. You're seeing your understanding. You're seeing what it is that makes you, you Taurus. And how you cannot change that for anybody else. You know, you cannot make a bull into a lamb. You just can't. A bull is strong and it is powerful and it's determined. And that's what you're represented by in the Zodiac. You are this strong, powerful, forceful being. And you need to move forward in your truth. And this is you looking at your earth star chakra, you know, located six inches below your feet, your, your roots going down, what it is that you desire. Think of yourself as a tree. And you're communicating with the world, but also with you, with what you want, of where you're supposed to be, of how you're supposed to be moving forward. You and your angels are really opening up this communication. And you're going to be communicating with people on multifaceted different levels. You're going to be looking at what they say, how they look, the tone of their voice, the, the facial expressions that they have. You know, you're going to be communicating spiritually how they feel, emotionally how they feel. A lot of people aren't going to be bringing that much, you know, that much information, not that much information, that much communicative power to the table. So just be mindful of that during this time, that you communicate so deeply and take this communication, take this power of your throat chakra and focus it with your angels, focus it with your spirit guides, focus it with the opening up of your third eye or the embracing and the strengthening of your lungs because you are going to see yourself moving forward in power and, a, and definitely having powerful conversations with your angels, with your spirit guides, with, with those that bless you, with divinity itself. Because you are this guiding light within your light, within your light and within your life. And it's shining up and out and rooting you. And this is the soul star chakra located six inches above your crown. This is blessings and beauty and prosperity and understanding and brilliance moving you forward. And it really does make you and does armor you quite gorgeously to be the knight of pentacles, to be the knight of your prosperity, of your wealth, of the way that you want to move forward. You move forward slowly and steadily. Of course you do. Okay, nothing that is built to last happens overnight. Right now, divinity is showing me a Roman road. Look up if you don't know what a Roman road looks like. It's cobblestones, I believe, or bricks, or I don't know, all laid down. And those roads still last today. And then we look at our roads that need to be, you know, pulled up and, and don't last this long. You are laying the foundation of a Roman road. You are laying the foundation of a pathway that will forever lead you and forever guide you and forever be your strength. And you might not know exactly how that foundational truth is working in your life right now, but it is working to lead you forward and to embrace your strength. And this is because as you defend what it is 
that is most prosperous to you as you defend the seeds that you are planting and the bounty that is coming and the choices that you make and the prosperity that guides you and the, the stabilizing factor of your soul and of yourself. It leads you to the chariot. Now, every single move that we make, you see a chessboard here. It's like every single move that you, you make leads you, it's, leads you to a different way or has a different consequence than maybe you're even aware of at the time. And so here, Taurus, what Spirit is saying is that as you move forward, it's like move forward in love. Embrace the tame side of you, but also embrace the wild side of you. It's not that, oh, I could never think of doing something horrendous. And it's not that, I'm not saying here to do something horrendous. It is, there's a power in knowing the strength of yourself, the strength of your soul, the strength of your being. To sit there and to say, I am a human being and human beings are able of doing tremendous evil and tremendous good. And it's not being that doe-eyed, you know, kind of innocent or naive person that says, I could never do anything wrong. I could never walk down a path that is unrighteous, right? Because divinity shows us that we can and knocks us down and shows us really harsh truths. And so the night here, the night of the shadows and the night of the light, both can be too blinding. You know, I can never do anything wrong, can absolutely blind us. I, I can't see the light or there are so many shadows along the way, can blind us. Too much darkness, too much light, it makes it impossible to see. But if we put these two aspects of ourselves together, then we go from being that doe-eyed person to being that person that has tremendous strength, tremendous power, tremendous understanding. And you move forward in speed and in ferocity and really reining in what you love and saying, this is me. This is where I need to be, body, mind, spirit, and soul. And it gives you strength. Strength like you hadn't realized before. And you tame dragons. And what are dragons? But the subconscious part of our mind that hoards away what we most love and keeps it from our day-to-day -day life. You are strength. You are power. You are understanding. You are focus. You are ferocity. You are this strength leading you forward. You are so much more than you expected. And when we see the strength, this isn't brute force strength. You can't demand a dragon listen to you. Just like you can't demand your psyche listen to you. It's like, you know, subconscious, you will do exactly as I say. Oh, please. You know, the subconscious is like a toddler. It's like, no, I won't. It takes so much training, so much connection, so much, you know, meditation and spiritual understanding to open up that door to say, oh, I listen. I listen and I can talk and communicate with my subconscious openly and honestly and, and brilliantly. And so here, as you're moving forward and as you're embracing your strength, you really are seeing that it is not brute force strength that will change the, the course of your life or that, yeah, because brute, brute force strength conquers. It conquers and it, you know, cuts down all that do not agree with it. So here with, and it, it builds no love. It doesn't build any love. And here you're moving forward with what you love guides you, what you love moves you, what you love defines you. And so here with the, with the strength, what you are embracing is that love and compassion and kindness, but firmness. It's kind of like follow through. It's kind of like when you're raising a kid, you have to, or when you're with a kid, you have to have follow through. You say, if you do this again, this will happen. Either they stop, you know, and they listen to the consequence or they understand that there is a consequence and that's what happens. And so here it is that same way with ourselves. It is saying, I'm firm, I'm dedicated, I'm determined. And this is the consequence if I don't listen. You know, if you don't get all your work done by this time, then you're going to have to work later. You know, if you, if you don't listen to yourself, Taurus, there there's going to be this sense of something very beautiful being just out of reach. And so here you become a student. You start off, and that, that makes sense that you start off being crowned as a warrior, okay? Because you are a warrior for this time, for your dedication, for your power, for the way that you want to move forward. And it leads you to being a student of your prosperity, of 
what you want from life. The, the pentacle here being the sun that shines behind you. And it's like, this is what I need. This is what I desire. This is what halos me, blesses me, gives me my sacred holy truth to move forward. These are the seeds that I want to plant. This is the knowledge I didn't know I was missing. This is what opens up a world to me. This is what opens up doors I didn't know I was barred from. And it brings you to your heart, embracing the Seven of Pentacles. And the Seven of Pentacles, okay, is this sense of, and you have the repeat of the number seven here, so truth and honesty are going to be so important, not only for others, but also for yourself. Okay, sorry for that side note. But here, with the Seven of Pentacles, you're going to want to have everything kind of right away. And that's, that's the heart. Like, that's what we want. And that's also just us as human beings. We want everything yesterday. We're so excited when we're waiting for something to come and we're so overjoyed for this and for that. But we have to, we have to be patient because the sweetness of it lasts longer. The beauty of it is more. And so here with the Seven of Pentacles, it's like, this is what I want for my life. And your heart is saying, divine timing will bring it. But it also brings with it frustration because it's like, I don't want things in divine timing. I want things in my timing. I want to be able to look at the people that I went to school with and said, ha ha, I made it. You know, that type of thing. Or everybody who doubted, who doubted you, who doubts along the way. You know, parents, siblings, exes. You know, ha ha, I made it. You were wrong. I was right. We want that. And we want to do so in a spectacular way. And Spirit is saying, prosperity comes in many different views, in many different ways. And it leads you forward to success and to bounty. And it can be oh so sweet. But you also have to, have to nurture it and watch it grow. Because a lot of prosperity that comes in, that is either gotten too quickly or not really deeply earned or, you know, like is forced in one way or another, is like biting into unripe fruit. It's not as good. It's like... It's like biting into a not right pear or biting into an apple that tastes like a potato and you're like, oh, that's sad. Here, it is, divinity is saying, in my time, the blessings come. And your heart needs to know that because your heart is kind of feeling like, I'm never going to stop the battle. It's always going to be uphill. The road isn't a Roman road. It's like one of those freaky little deer trails that I keep on tripping over, you know, rocks and everything like that. And I'm not getting where I want to be. Step back. Step back and look at what your heart truly wants. And look at the little things. Because we, we don't see the little things. As human beings, I call it a firework life. We want the big fireworks out there that the neighbors can ooh and ah over and just be like, wow, that's awesome. Life doesn't always work that way. And plus, if we had firework life, one big thing after another after another, it's exhausting. You want that, that steady, okay, that beautiful calm. Right? That sense of, I can go outside and drink a cup of tea and listen to the birds sing. And that is my grace. You know, that is my blessing. And we don't take time anymore. So here, it's like, take that time. See that beauty. Because the blessings come. And it moves you to being a queen. To being a nurturer of what you desire, of your way forward. The queen... The Queen of Pentacles, and that's why, okay, that's why I had to stop on it. Because first of all, I, I was like, what is she holding in her hands? And of course it is a baby, because a lot of times the queens are depicted with babies. And she has, it's, she had kids, kids with her, the goats, the baby goats, and she has adult goats, and she has, you know, kind of the, the ram or, you know, the male goat kind of looking after her, or female goat, I don't really know. And so here... There is this sense of, I am protected. I am protected by what others might curse. And I know that sounds, that sounds weird to say. But, you know, goats, especially in Western culture, are symbols of, of the devil, right? They have weird eyes, but they're also super smart, actually. And they, they're super useful. Like, goats with goat milk and, you know everything like that, they're, they're one of the most common animal to have, right? And it, it sounds odd to say, but especially in the ancient world, they were very common to have herds of goats. And so here, 
your prosperity is protected, okay, by ancestral truth, all right? And here, it's not only you nurturing children. So it's not saying that you have to, to be a nurturer, though the queen is more nurturing than the king is. What it is saying here is that you are nurturing that inner child within you. And if you nurture that child within, you cannot help but nurture the world without, uh, yeah, outside yourself. So here, with the queen of pentacles, you are nurturing who you once were. And by doing so, you are nurturing who you will become. And you are seeing the interconnectedness of things. You are also telling your inner self, you can be prosperous, you can be bountiful, and you are. The door is open. I do not have to be scared or hurt or hidden away. I open to my truth. I open to my power. I open to my understanding. And I open in my grace. And that, and that lets you be a ruler here of prosperity within your heart because you're, you're made up of, during this time, you know, you have almost all pentacles. You have the, the nine of cups here. It's like a blessing that is easier for others to see within you than it is for you to see within yourself. And this blessing comes in and it guides you and it transforms you and it, it grants you a wish that brings you the bounty, the prosperity, and the abundance that you want. And you have the repeat of the number nine. So emotionally, you're very close to the end of a cycle. Now, that's exactly it because we have here the five of pentacles. And I'm going to jump around for just a moment. And so as you are a knight and a student and a queen of your prosperity, there is also a sense in the public arena of you and, you know, you get to bask in the glory of your wealth. And that's what the nine of, of pentacles says. The, the five of pentacles is you have known poverty of despair. You have known hardship, pain, disappointment. You have lost and you have mourned. You have mourned most definitely. And there is a sense here of reclaiming that strength within yourself. And that five of pentacles, especially in the public arena, actually wherever the five of pentacles comes, it can rob away all the glory, all the grace, and all the brilliance that you have built, that anybody has built. And the Nine of Cups is saying there are, is so much more to you and there are so many more blessings to you than you are acknowledging within yourself, that you are acknowledging as you move forward. It's like you need to look at what you have done, but also emotionally how far you have come. And you might say, you know, Dean, it was better when I was younger. You know, when I was a kid, life was easier. And it's like, okay, fair, most definitely. And for some people that isn't true, you know, but if that is true, and, you know, when I was starting off, when I, I was, you know, this and that, it was easier. But the more you live, the more responsibilities you get. But it's also the more time you have to fail. And I know nobody wants to talk about that. We don't, we don't like failures. <laughs> we like successes, right? But human beings, we fail a lot. If you watch how a child learns to walk, they fall a lot before they start to walk. So here, it's knowing that with us. And the hard thing about failing when we enter into, you know, the public arena, the workforce, the, the you know, progression for our careers. We think, oh, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to make this much money. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then it starts to fall short. And the blow to our hearts, our souls, and ourselves can make it so devastating that we never want to try again. And here with the Nine of Cups, there's a healing that happens. There's a wish that's heard. There's a brilliance and a power that is a part of you. And divinity is saying, okay, you have failed. It's not that you have failed that defines you. It's what you do after. And you might need time to lick your wounds. You might need time to kind of sit back and be like, holy guacamole, you know, that was hard. That was intense. I don't like it. And look at who you are what you deeply want within this world, the brilliance of your soul because you shine with it. There's power to you, Taurus. You might not see it as easily as others do. All right, and you might be saying here, Dane, others do not see it within me. How do I move forward? How do I embrace? How do I embolden? How do I go? And so here with the Nine of Cups, it's like there is power to you. Embrace it with love. Embrace you with love. 
nurture that person. It doesn't have to be the inner child. You know, it could be the inner 20-year-old. It could be the inner 30-year-old, 40-year-old, 50-year-old. You know, keep on going, 10-year-old. You know, sit there and look at the parts in your life. And we see it right here where things got hard. Things got real. People betrayed you. People hurt you, you know, and it didn't go as planned. And there is beauty around you, all right? And that's going to be a very interesting thing because as you have this coming at you, your heart is saying, I am more powerful than anything the world can throw at me. And you might think, okay, well, that's a big statement. And it is. It is a big statement because you start to see this love coming in. You start to see this power coming in. And you are embracing this prosperity. You are embracing this bounty. You are seeing, you know, a job well done. Now, in the Rider Waite Smith deck, she has you know, this vineyard that she's walking in and she's dressed in these luscious, you know, rich robes and there's wealth all around her. And here there's wealth all around her. You don't get to sit in this position and have, you know, this exotic cat at your feet, if not for wealth. But there's still hard work ahead. And so here within your heart, it's like, as you claim your prosperity and your power, as you're patient, as you know that things come with the divine timing, as you start to really embrace your heart, what you love, what you need, the way that you're moving forward, you start to have that connection with yourself and you start to see and really bask in the glory of the little things. The wealth comes in. The wealth comes in. But it's going to be, and it's going to bring, it's going to be and it's going to bring with it hard work. Times where you're going to have to roll up your sleeves, where you're going to have to sit there and say, whoa, this is more than I thought that I was biting off. But where I want to be and the payoff, it's worth it. Because in the public arena, and what you bring to the table is extensive and astounding because you have been through the ringer. You have been through the ringer. And here with the tower, You know, here, the tower isn't just crumbling, it's lit on fire. So this is divinity saying, I want you out of your comfort zone. It's not just that it's going to crumble, it's that it's going to burn to the ground. So here, it's like, okay, I'm uncomfortable. I don't know what I want. I don't know how I want to move forward. I don't know where I want to be. And divinity is pushing me. And it can be that you rail against divinity. It's like, what divinity is showing me, okay? I didn't want to do tarot readings. When I first started, I thought, no, you know, everybody's going to laugh. I don't want to do this. But I kept on being drawn to it and drawn to it. And my mom was like, just, just do it. Just start. So I started astoundingly, hesitantly. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. But I felt alive. I felt alive and happy. And I was, I was so unhappy before. And divinity took my comfort zone, which was like over here, very introverted, very quiet person, okay, and it threw me <laughs> way out here to something I never expected. And that's what I'm seeing with the tower with you. It's like it throws you. And what it brings you, from the ashes, you get peace. From the sense of, my gosh, I didn't expect this. Life took over. Life took hold. And I am moving in ways that I never realized. And maybe I never wanted, but actually turned out to be really good for me. And now I have this peace. I have this power. And that's what you're seeing here, Taurus. It's like, now I have this peace. I have this power. And divinity guides. And so when you look at something and it's like, oh, I don't want to do that. Or, oh, that's a bit of a challenge. It's like, I will not be defeated because I have walked through the tower. You know, I have lived through this time. And divinity has changed me, has forged me, has moved me forward. And here with the three of swords, this is the heartbreak, the pain, the disappointment that we have been through. You know, this is what defines our lives. And here... The Three of Swords, we can live in the Three of Swords. I can't do that because it's scary. I can't do that because I was hurt before. I can't possibly open up my world to anything more because life tears you down. The Three of Swords is looking at what holds us back subconsciously and consciously where we can sit there and say, oh, well, when I try that, my father's voice comes into my head, my mother's voice comes into my head, my ex's voice and says, you, you can't, like, what, you think you're special? You know, that type of thing. And I can't. I can't move forward that way. I can't truly be happy. Because what I truly love is silly. Everybody will laugh. Let them. Let them. 
It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. And what's really hard to come to the conclusion of is that it doesn't matter how much Okay, so it's the pain, the sorrow, and the anger that a person speaks over us. And that's stepping back and saying, that's your pain, that's your hurt, that's your sorrow, that's your anger. It doesn't get to define my life. And the three of swords is when those pains and those hurts, they start to define our lives. They send us down paths that break our hearts. It changes the way that we see things because we trust it. We loved so deeply, so truly, so openly, so honestly. And now it's scary to do so again. And this affects, this can be, you know, your parents got divorced when you were little. This could be you switched schools. This could be, you know, your, your first love like ended terribly or, you know, your second love or whatever. This can be things that you don't think affect you when it comes to work, when it comes to career, when it comes to money, but it makes you timid. And it's not saying here to be blinded and just run forward and, you know, and, and take unnecessary risk. But it's also saying not to let the fear and the pain and the hurt and the disappointment become all that you see or cripple you so that it makes you feel like you cannot fly. Because Taurus, you are soaring. And in the public arena, there's a lot of hard work here that goes into, you know, seeing this change for what it is, looking at this heartbreak, this pain, this disappointment, and, and honoring it. We don't like to talk about pain. And when people sit there and say, oh, I honored the pain and it was such a privilege, you know, it, it drives me crazy <laughs> at times. I was like, how could you say that? And then especially, yeah, it, it absolutely drove me crazy. It's like, honor the pain. And it's like, I didn't want pain. I didn't ask for that. I didn't ask to be born this way. I didn't ask to, you know, any, I didn't ask for any of this. Why do I have to honor it when it did not honor me? It was the contract that we wrote. It was what we had to learn, okay? And the legion of angels that are behind us. We honor the pain because it broke the shell of what we once were. And it's having us reform. Broken, yes. Everybody's a bit broken but stronger and fiercer and more determined and being able to more readily understand the shadowed side and the tame side of us and how to coexist. And it brings us to the pauper's mentality. It brings us to that place of, of ruin. If you've, you know, experienced ruin, I have. It's, it's not fun where you sit there and you cry yourself to sleep at night and you're like, oh my gosh, how did I even get here? what happened and you like sit there and you think back and that's the worst thing to do when you start thinking back and you're like oh you know hindsight is 2020 20. you're like oh I should have done this differently I should have done that differently you know and then you start to hate who you once were because if you had been different this wouldn't have happened here's the thing you cannot change the past you just can't and to hate yourself that's not cool because it cripples you. It cripples you just as readily as the hurt, the pain, the anger that was spoken over you in times of, you know, helplessness, in times of, you know, in times when your guards were down, okay? And here, it's like, no. No, I don't get to look at my life as a mistake. I don't get to look and sit there and only see everything I've lost, everything that hasn't gone right. I get to embrace the power and the prosperity of me. I get to walk through that door and claim my wealth because I will not be defined by failure. I will not be defined by, by fear anymore. It has taken me time and I have healed. And now I walk in greatness. Remember that, Taurus. It has taken me time. And say that to yourself. It has taken me time. And I have healed. 
that now I walk through greatness. It might not be fully healed. It might be a little bit healed. And it comes and it keeps coming. That healing, that power, that sense of I belong. This is no longer the pauper's mentality. This is no longer looking at things and saying, oh no, I can't. This isn't being foolish, though sometimes you might be a bit extravagant. But this is being... This is being. This is enjoying your life. It's not, you know, going out and buying the fanciest car and having the biggest house. It is enjoying your existence. It is filling your life with wealth, wealth of laughter, wealth of beauty, and it's opening up the door. It might not even be talking about financial wealth right away. The Five of Pentacles can say that the life has been has been barred from the beauty because the hurts and the pains and the disappointments and the angers and the upsets, they became too much. And it leads you, it leads you to say, no, I'm not locked out of the world of beauty anymore. And I become a student of my passion, of my power, of my purpose forward. I become a student of my career, of the spark inside of me of the reason I get out of bed in the morning. And the reason you get out of bed in the morning might not be the same, you know, reason or the same thing that puts, you know, food in your food in your pocket, money in your pocket and food on the table. There we go. But to embrace that spark, to embrace that passion, to embrace that brilliance, it opens up the world to you and it moves you forward. And it moves you into into the unknown. It moves you into a world that seldom gets explored because people forget their dreams or people get bitter and they say, oh, this did nothing for me. If it brings that spark into your life, if it brings joy and it brings laughter and it brings beauty into you, then it is worth it, absolutely worth it. And that's what you become a student of. And then it starts to open new doors, new avenues, new understandings to you. And you're like, oh, that's it, isn't it? And it bleeds over. If you start to have that spark of happiness and brilliance, it bleeds over into everything that you do. And you see you really starting to soar. So let's go deeper. Taurus. December 2020, money and career, Taurus. December 2020, money and career, Taurus. December 2020, money and career, Taurus. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Fantastic. And let's see the people you have to be mindful of during this time. Who are the people that Taurus needs to be mindful of? December 1st, not December 1st, December 2020, money and career. Who are the people that Taurus needs to be mindful of? December 2020, money and career. Who are the people Taurus needs to be mindful of? December 2020, money and career. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. <coughs> Excuse me. We start here with the chariot. This is cancer energy. You have a very positive cancer energy, but you also have this negative cancer energy, this person who lets their emotions just run wild with them. And this is going to be a person because you have this strong cancer energy in your reading that you're very drawn to. You're like, oh, we have these similarities or, oh, I can, I can help you. Or there's, there's something, it's like you see things the same way I do, or you're moving forward in this passion, in this love, and that really intrigues you. But they just go off the rail. This is a person who is ruled by the chaos of their emotion and will definitely pull you down into that chaos. 
You have the King of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. Strong Cancer like here. This is a person who is egotistical, who only knows about themselves, narcissistic, okay, who, you know, sits there and wants what they want when they want it, can understand when they're hurt, but have no respect and no compassion for anybody else. So here it's like, just be mindful about this. They could have a very big dog too, because the King of Cups in the positive sense is like this beautiful person who rules their life and says, I can only rule me and I will do that well. And that's my job. This person here is going to try and rule everybody else. They're not ruling their own life. They're just, they're just a mess. They really are a mess. And then we have the Queen of Swords, Air Sign Energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This person is very haughty, okay? This person is aloof, doesn't really share the information that, that you want, that you need. They're so wrapped up in their own world, their own knowledge. They also can be very cutting when they disseminate information. It's like, well, if you can't see it, I can't help you type of thing. And you're like, what the heck does that mean? You know, that's rude. So here, just be, just be mindful of that. And they'll use things and they'll say it as fact. It might not even be a fact. They'll just sit there and, and say, say something and it will be fact for them. And if you don't understand it, then you're a fool and I can't help you. And that's, that's just the sense here. And they can be very cutting, very manipulative, very kind of like, you know, yeah, unsavory with their words. So do be mindful and they'll know exactly where to cut. Exactly. They'll like be able to size you up instantaneously. And I mean, if they use their power for good, that would be awesome like, to build people up, but they use it to rip people down. And yeah, they'll just hit you where it hurts. And you're like, oh my goodness. So we have here the nine of pentacles, the nine of swords, the five of cups, the three of swords again, now over your heart. The lovers, Gemini energy, very powerful, especially for you Torians who are on the cusp with Gemini, but very powerful in and of itself. Time frame of Gemini is May 21st to June 20th. And then you have justice, Libra energy. And this is a time frame of September 23rd to October 22nd. The three of cups, you have the repeat of the number three. You have the repeat of the number nine. The tower, once again, in the public arena. Really, your world has been rocked. And this doesn't mean, this doesn't have to mean anything bad. I know when we see the tower, we think, oh my gosh, that's horrible. But it also means that you, you've gone through a tower time. You've gone through a time that could have lasted 16 years or more, where your whole life and the whole trajectory of your life changed. And then you have the three of pentacles. Your hard work pays off. So you have three, three times. Yeah, divinity is definitely watching over you. Okay. So we start here with the Nine of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles is you're now crowned with the Nine of Pentacles, whereas before in your heart, you were rooted with the Nine of Pentacles. So this is prosperity that comes in. This is bounty. This is something, you know, fought for, hard won. It's, it's still going to take work, but you can sit back, you can relax, and you can savor this moment as you move forward, as you are a defender of your prosperity, and as you drive that chariot, drive what you love towards your goal. Now, over the strength card is the Nine of Swords. Nightmares, worries, doubts, fears. You, you can be working yourself too hard. That's definitely something that can be here. And you, you go to sleep and you're thinking about work and you wake up and you're thinking about work or all the responsibilities that you have and everything that you need to juggle. The Nine of Swords brings forward the nightmares and the nightmares can paralyze. So this is just something you're going to have to be very mindful of here, Taurus, to not let the nightmares rob your strength, to not let the fear and the worry and, you know, the what ifs rob away your strength and your brilliance. The Five of Cups... Okay, change your mind, change your life. As you become a student of your prosperity, you turn away from looking at the negative and you start looking at the healing positive, the healing way forward, and the healing beauty that is around you. It leads you then to the Three of Swords. Okay, the Three of Swords is heartbreak, pain, and disappointment. You know, the 
Yeah, just as Spirit was saying before, what, what, you know, breaks your wings. And we see that here. What shoots you down? It's like, no, I get to soar. And that's going to be so important for you during this time. It's, I get to soar. I have the queen. I'm embracing myself as the queen of my passion, of what I desire, of what I need. I get to soar. And the lovers, it's like we have to look at, even though we don't want to, we have to look at the pain and the hurt that defines us. Because if we don't look at the pain and the hurt that has scarred us along the way of our existence, we don't find soulmates. Okay, we don't find lovers that truly connect with our soul and ourselves. We find wound mates that perpetuate the hurt. It's like, oh, I, I know this pain. I'm, I'm comfortable with this pain. I get to stay here. And it's like, no, no. And you'll find that not only with romantic partners, but you'll find that with coworkers. You'll find that with, with friends, with business ideas. It's like you will perpetuate. And you can see that with jobs too. It's like you will perpetuate the wounds, the hurts, the pains, the disappointments, okay, if they are not addressed. And now it is time, as you embrace these blessings, to move forward in love. Love of your life, love of your soul, love of yourself. This moving forward in brilliance and in beauty and in celebration. This falling in love. And it brings you to justice. It brings you to discernment as you get to sit back and revel in and really accept and embrace the prosperity that is a part of you. Discernment is like, I cannot spread myself so thin, so thin, and I have to know me. I have to know where I can walk and how I can walk this path and where I shouldn't tread, where my skills are, and be, and be just to myself. And as you do so, the Three of Cups comes in. Now, the Three of Cups for me, over the Tower, over the Three of, of Swords, the Three of Cups is that person who raised their glass to us, but didn't mean it, couldn't follow through, couldn't be there. And the Three of Cups is hurts and pains and disappointments and, and the devastation of heart. And it's addressing it. Because as you address it, as you give it voice and you release it, You see that things change. And it's over here, the tower, over the money, over the five of pentacles. You might have lost it all. And how it's time to rebuild. How it's time to open those doors. Divinity has changed the course. It does that. You might find that this December you, you go through a tower time. Not in a way that it ruins your holidays. Okay? but in a way that it has you looking at things. And this year has had us looking at things in such a changed and profound way. Divinity threw us out of our comfort zones. Hard, hard. And said, what do you value? What do you want and what do you need? And you have the tools here to work, to get it, to achieve, and to succeed. And to let that light of your success shine on you to claim it because this is what this is what you desire this is the passion that leads you forward this is what you need within yourself and that light shines and that hard work pays off and nobody else can take credit for this but you but there has also been brilliant teamwork between you and divinity between you even and others you can see the people along the way that helped you soar when you might have fallen Let's see what your spirit animal message is. Taurus, December 2020, money and career. Taurus, December 2020, nothing, money and career. Spirit just said nothing is held back during this time, so do know that. <laughs> Taurus, December 2020, money and career. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Ooh. Okay. These four. So we start off with the groundhog spirit. Time to let go. It's time to let go of the pains of the heart. They've defined you for too long. The 
cow spirit. The miracles are endless, but they're small. We like them to be big, but the miracles are endless. They are tiny, they are beautiful, and they are worth their weight in gold. You know, it's funny. The big memories, the big things, yes, we remember them. But it's the little things that really matter. When all is said and done, it's the little things that let you know that you're loved. A person who makes a cup of tea, a cup of coffee for you, when they're getting themselves their own. A person who asks what you want when they're looking at things, or who really put in the thought of you behind it. Miracles start from there. They start from the littlest, tiniest things. And they build. It's like a baby's laugh. It's the littlest, tiniest thing that can put such a smile on your face. And then moves you to the hawk spirit. Let spirit be your guide. Spirit can see clearer and fly higher than you can possibly imagine. So let it guide you. And then you have the lion spirit. Be generous of spirit. Be generous of spirit, yes, to the world around you, but also to yourself, to what you love and what you want and the, brave, the bravery of your soul. Your subconscious spirit animal message is the buffalo spirit. The abundant universe will provide. Have patience. It's coming. It is. And I know there's been heartbreak and pain so much pain along the way. And we doubt when it comes to success, when it comes to brilliance, when it comes to moving forward. But the brilliant universe, the abundant and brilliant universe will provide. It leads you to your subconscious chakra message, which is psychic development, the third eye chakra. You're being held by divinity by your angels, by your spirit guides. You're developing psychically, intuitively. Let that force guide you forward. It might be a little bit too intense at times. You can dial it back. Say, you know, divinity, I'm not ready yet. Or I can't walk that path so intensely. And it can be dialed back. But trust your intuition during this time. You're not simply swimming upstream for nothing. It brings you then to your subconscious person message, which is the moon. There are things that you fear most definitely, but you're embracing the two aspects of yourself. And this is a time where you are cognitively making the choice not to let fear rule, because it can easily. This is looking at the fear. It is honoring the fear. It is moving forward. It's looking at the shadows, and it is honoring the shadows. And it is saying, you don't get to terrify me anymore. We are sight hunters. The only other predator on this earth that is a better sight hunter than us are the birds of prey, the hawk spirit, the eagle spirit, and so forth. So when we do not see, we get afraid. That is why we bathe our world in light. The moon can make us uneasy. It can make us think things, deeper thoughts than we want to. And here, as we embrace the moon spirit, as we embrace the spirit of the moon, we move forward, knowing its serenity, knowing its beauty, knowing that it coolly reflects the light of the sun. It is calmer, it is gentler. And we see that beautiful things and horrible things can happen at night. And we embrace the depth of our soul. And it moves you then, Taurus, your subconscious tarot message <laughs> which is the moon again the Pisces energy coming forward it is time to face the fears and move forward in the power that is you because grace, greatness lies within even if you doubt it it graces you it guides you and it drives you and there's beauty in the moon you'll find that some of your greatest inspirations happen at night. 
to go deeper into your subconscious. We have the Page of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, once again connecting you to the moon. Be a student of what you love. Be a student of what you desire. And you will find inspiration in the oddest of places. All right, Taurus. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy. As we step into this great unknown, as divinity holds nothing back, and as greatness is achieved, and as sorrow is left behind, because there is so much more in this world for you, Taurus, than you ever even imagined. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Taurus.